Welcome to episode 247 of UFO Buster Radio News, the place that you want to be on a daily. So this week, I'm trying to remain a bit more active, trying to put out as much info as possible so that I can corrupt your minds every single way I can. That's what the aim is this week. I am going to corrupt you. You're going to go into work and all of a sudden you're going to see a new episode. You're like, shit, did he just read my mind? I was surprised. I saw a new episode when I had one yesterday. And actually yesterday there were two. There is a bid uh, a bid to take over your brains, your life by me, and I will do it. This is the summer of the takeover. But if you feel lucky, you feel like you want to do something nice, you can always follow the podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and the Twitters. And there's nothing better than hitting like and share. Because sharing is caring. Big O used to say it all the time. Now the news report today has nothing to do with the... uh, the issues in Nevada is something totally different. This time we're going into a, a bit of a scientific realm. However, there was a little update before I got on, and that is that uh, someone, a performer, a performer by the name of Limp Biscuit, he decided that, uh, well, anyway, he's in talks, to be at this uh, Area 51 meme fest in uh, in Nevada, believe it or not. That's the word on the streets right now. He is going to join the Area 51 festival in September. And uh, listen, if, if Limp Biscuit shows up, who the hell knows? Maybe Vanilla Ice will show up next too, being that uh, they're, such <laughs> they're such big names these days. Yeah. Can't wait. And I'm sure that... Uh, the Alien Inn is probably opening the doors and getting ready for a lot of people to flood that place just because Limp Bizkit's going to show up. I'm going to lie. I mean, listen, a lot of people still go see, uh, you know, Mariah Carey, right? So why not see Limp Bizkit? There'll probably be a pretty big turnout of potheads that are going to go and enjoy their time. Why wouldn't they? That's just the way it is. And it's aliens. What's better than aliens than brownies? But that's my little extra, extra, extra. Read all about it. That's what's happening right now. That's what's um, turning in the uh, news reports right now. That's what's churning. A lot of people are talking about it. They're hearing this. And you know what? It, it's already out there. It's got to be a thing. Link Biscuit will show up. So we're not going to have a Area 51 uh, festival slash concert. That's the way that's the way it's going to turn out. I guarantee it. No doubt about it. Now, let's go into the news report because this is more uh, about science. Uh, so let's hit it. Extra, extra, read all about it. We have another way to identify alien life on other planets. Like, we didn't have enough ways, right? Do, I mean, why not add another way? We, actually, I'll be honest, I think this one is pretty cool. I kind of like this one. Um, it almost makes sense in a really weird way. But, yeah, way. But, uh, listen, I'll be honest. A lot of this just makes no sense. Why we even give two fucks? Let's just talk about that at the end of this but here's the deal fluorescent glow in the universe could be sign of alien life say scientists so this is published by the independent of the uk apparently some scientists got together and they said hey check this out if we look at a planet through a powerful telescope that's 4.2 many light years away and we look at this thing and it actually has 
an atmosphere that protects it from its local sun. It is very possible that this particular planet would look to us like it's glowing because it is pretty much reflecting all the radiation that's being dumped on it by its local sun, so we would see a bunch of different colors radiating from this planet. That sounds fantastic. I mean, that's a, that's amazing. That's fantastic. That is great. So you literally could look at a planet that's being protected by its atmosphere so that it doesn't get irradiated, kind of like us. Now, here's my question about this. I know some guys from Cornell put this together. Fantastic. Great. I like what you're I like where you're going with this. It, it makes a lot of sense. But first of all, we live on a planet that um has an atmosphere that protects us from being dumped on by our sun. Uh but has anybody looked back and seen whether or not the fuck we fucking radiate? This is not a theory, folks. This this is not a theory. We actually live on one of those fucking planets you wrote about. Do we radiate when someone, let's say a satellite or a deep space uh, craft looks back at us? Do we radiate in radiant colors? I have yet to see that. So that's my first question. That's uh that's what um that's what bothers me. Now the process by which this happens is called biofluorescence and the glow again is formed because there is a protection from the radiation that the planets are hit with from their sun and so it creates this uh, beautiful colors basically uh, a nice place to live at. Does this really mean that there is a uh, life on the planet just because it has an atmosphere and it's being protected by its local sun. No, they don't really get into that. They don't really say that that's what's happening. All they know is that there's an atmosphere. It's protecting that planet. So if there is alien life on it, it would survive. And at least, at the very least, it won't be uh, radiated. So you're not going to have those extremely high temperatures, all the radiation coming through. You know, if there's a solar flare, it's not going to kill everything on the planet. Kind of like it happens here. But the question is, how do you really know that? Can you, t- I mean, like I said, you're living on a planet that has this particular situation. We are in what we call the Goldilocks zone, third planet from the sun. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, depending on where you live on a fucking planet. Some places are hard as, uh, hot as hell, like in Texas right now. It's over 100 degrees every fucking day the last two weeks. It's, it's nasty. It's just nasty. But what I'm saying is, you live on the planet where you came up with this theory. So can't you test it? Can't you just have one of these uh, deep space satellites, probes, look back and say, hey, let's look at planet Earth, let's run some of these, and let's see if we get some kind of biofluorescence from our own planet. Before you go and publish all this crazy shit in uh, scientific papers. I'm just saying. That's just my thing. Now, we've got all these ways of looking up whether or not uh, maybe a planet could be habitable, whether or not there could be alien life somewhere. We listen for radio signals. We look at maybe uh, shifts in light, as we saw the whole thing back in the spring about the uh, alien megastructures around suns. We also look at whether or not they're in the Goldilocks zone. If one of these satel- deep space satellites, uh, telescopes should I say, like uh, Kepler, finds a planet that's in the quote-unquote Goldilocks zone like we are, we say, hey, maybe that is a planet that can hold life. But then we also have other projects where we send messages out. And now we have glowing planets like it's the last dragon So it's glowing because it's reached the upper level. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck it is. My question is this. And I'm putting it out there kind of like I put the question yesterday regarding whether or not um, whether or not the earth is flat. And here's my question again. And this this is the whole thing about the podcast. We put out questions that 
should get you to think if you're not a uh, one-way butthole, basically. If you're a one-way butthole, then, you know, that's the way it is. It only goes one way. Nothing's going to change your mind or the direction of your butthole. But listen, the question for me is this. Who the fuck cares? If we identify a planet that is literally 3.5 billion light years away, and we say, that bitch is glowing, who cares? Literally, the glow that you're seeing is 3.5 billion years old. You're assuming that that glow held life that's still alive today when we see it. It doesn't help anybody. No one should give two fucks about it. So yeah, you discovered a planet with a glow. So what? If you were to send a message back by radio, laser, whatever the fuck it is you want to do, it would take 3.5 billion fucking years to get there. You're not going to get the answer. What does what does it matter to anyone something that far whether it glows or not? And, you know, I don't just want to poop on this because people say I'm a critic. Yeah, I'm a fucking critic. I am. Let's say you get a radio signal or a light signal. You get something flashed at you from a planet that's 2.5 billion years. You will not be around to answer or to reply or to know whether or not they got the reply. Fuck, let's be honest. It is possible our planet will not be here by the time they get the reply. I understand space research makes sense for a lot of people. You want to know. You want to understand. But at the end of the day, you need to research what the fuck people are saying on our own planet. You need to research that our own government, other governments, and everybody else around the planet is reporting... Before you can figure out what the hell is happening billions of light years away. Because it's not helping you. It it really isn't. It makes no sense that we have folks in the military, folks in everyday life reporting these crafts that make... They run circles, basically, around our most expensive, most technical aircraft. And yet, we're looking at billions of light years Away, basically billions of light years in the past to figure out what's happening now today. There is something wrong with that that line of thinking. That you're going to be able to impact science today, that you're going to be able to impact our understanding of potential life somewhere else when you're looking billions of years into the past. The numbers just don't match up. They just they didn't make no sense to me. Maybe I'm the only one. If you feel that looking that far in the past from a light source makes any sense to you, let me know. Because I guarantee you that by the time this research, this research comes to fruition, you, you'll be gone, your grandchildren will be gone, your great-grandchildren and their grandchildren several generations ahead will be gone. So what the fuck is your research for if you're not going to be here to see it validated? I know. I'm an evil critic. That's what I do. I just, I I like to talk shit, but it comes from a point of uh, perspective, right? I don't have 4.8 billion years to wait for somebody to fucking decide that there's a, a planet with alien life. That makes no sense. I, I can barely live freaking 60, 65 years. Come on. My 401k is not going to last that long. Neither is yours. Whoever wrote this paper over in Cornell, you, you've you got too much time on your hands, but not enough time to figure out whether what you just said in that paper even fucking works. I'll be honest with you. So why waste my time? Shit, why waste? I mean, if you got a bunch of student loans, you just wasted your money. Because that was just ridiculous. Don't forget to uh, download the the uh, 
UBR Alien Hunter Chapter 1 game. I'm hoping to have a special voiceover by someone you've heard on a, on the podcast a few times. And um, he sent me a message actually right now while we're on this uh, recording. But, uh, you know, I can't answer that. I'm, I'm working right now, okay? Come on. Let me work. I'm trying to get the job done. In the meantime, don't forget to share, follow, subscribe. Get the word out. It doesn't take very much for you to hit that share button, for you to hit that like button, for you to let people know that someone might be out there that wants to look at the common sense of things. Not just what's fantastic, like rushing Area 51. But really, what makes sense. And you know... Because we're talking about glowing planets, because they're like the last dragon of the universe, we're going to play Planet Stomp because it's a really exciting song. I know you guys love it, just like all the other music. Ciao.